No, sir. Two or three minutes. It, it depends on the uniqueness of the CV. Okay. Do you have any idea? I mean, how many CVs usually dropped against one circulation? Hundreds. I mean, 100, 200, 300. Uh, more than more than 200. Yeah. There are some posts, and uh, I, as I do have very good relationship with HR community, when I communicate with them, and sometimes they share their experience that we have published two or three posts and received 3,000 resumes against these three posts. So how long do they have to find the right one? And the research is saying that five to seven, seven seconds. So you do have five to seconds, seven seconds to have the attention of the recruiter to select your resume. Just they see, okay, they reject it. I mean, trash can or the box where he is selecting. Five to seven seconds. So you create your resume in such a way that your resume has such thing that can uh, have the attention of that recruiter. That is eye-catching resume, okay? So that should be different. Like if you have your educational background, your personal information, and most of the cases when students come to our office uh, just to check their resume, whether it is right or wrong. And I see, first, before I see uh, any resume, I ask him or her, uh, do you, uh, I mean, what do you have in your resume besides your degree from Southeast University? I mean, your educational background and your personal information. What are the things you have in your resume? Same questions to you. Ask yourself, what are the things you have in your resume to write? besides your educational qualification and personal information. That things will take your resume to selection I mean, process. And if you do not have anything, just personal information, I mean, one page for your father's name, mother's name, and a lot of things, about the, I mean, unnecessary thing. And your, I mean, HSC, HSC and university degree, finally MB or masters. Besides this, what are the things you have? That will take you to the interview board. So that is the thing actually today we are going to cover, okay? What are the purposes of a resume? Can anybody share? Anyone, unmute yourself and share your opinion. What are the purposes of a resume? To show what I have done in the past and what I can do in the future to show what you have done in the past, what you will do in the future. Okay, fine. Anything else? To represent myself. To represent myself, that's great. Anything Introduce else? everything. Introduce everything, what are the things? How many wives do you have? Uh, the future plans and uh, your activities, uh, present activities and what you have done in your past time and uh, uh, presently what you have to do. Still, I'm looking for, I mean, my expected answer. Anything else? Definitely, the primary pur purpose is to get a job, right? But the reality is, yes, job is secondary purpose. Primary pur purpose is to confirm you in the interview board. So, yes, the primary purpose of a resume is to ensure that you get a call from that particular company for an interview. Okay, that is primary purpose. And secondary purpose is to get the job, definitely. Because in interview board, you'll be asked certain questions. But besides it, there are certain things. What is a resume we need to understand so that we can craft our resume before we apply anywhere? First thing, your resume is a self-marketing tool because there are places you'll not be able to reach. There are places you'll not be able to go, but your resume will. Because the, I mean, Gatekeeper will not allow you to enter that building, but if there is any circular, if you apply, your resume will go there. So your resume will sell what you have. This is a kind of self-marketing tool. And when we design a kind of marketing brochure or leaflet, what do we do? Usually we use fancy, colorful pictures and catchy words and sentences. For example, for Southeast University, if you go to Southeast University Facebook page, I mean, you will see, 
we do have a lot of pictures in our university and videos, but what are the pictures we use to create our brochure and that uh, marketing poster, especially for department-wise or school-wise or from university? That is different because we use best picture that is attractive, that can create appeal, that get attention from the people and the catchy sentences we have written there. See, I mean, catchy chunk of words, phrases we have written there because we wanted to create, I mean, have the attention of our customer, okay? That is why your resume should have certain things that can uh, sell yourself, that, is, that can be used as a, your marketing tool, okay? And your resume represents you, your accomplishments, your competencies, your skill set. Because that you will not be there to talk about on behalf of yourself, okay, I am Jamaluddin Jami, I do have this kind of skills and competencies, I have achieved these kind of things in my whole career, so please hire me. Because you, I will not be there, and same thing, you will not be there to talk about yourself. So your resume will be talking on behalf of yourself to sell you. So these things should be there. I mean, your accomplishments, your competencies, your skills on and your resume, so that that can represent you what you truly are. That summarizes what you have to offer to employers. Like if you write on your resume, how many brothers do you have? What is your color? How, what is the color of your eyes? How many hairs you have? Uh, I mean, this thing doesn't work. And what's your father name? What's your mother name? That doesn't work. What works? What you have inside you to offer for that particular company. For example, you want to work as an, uh, okay, merchandiser. So there are certain uh, requirements to work as a marketing merchandiser. So may I uh, have anyone, any volunteer who can share what could be the requirements to become a mar merchandiser? Anyone? Can you share? Can you unmute yourself and share? I mean, what are the primary skills or competencies a merchandiser should have? You don't have an idea. You do have, please. I have a communication knowledge about the. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Communication. You need to be a good communicator. Okay, thank you very much. Anything else? Please, everyone, share. Uh, Use some depth knowledge about the merchandising. <laughs> Yeah, core knowledge from Mark Martindale. Okay, you should have uh, e English language knowledge. Of course, because you'll have to deal the, I mean, uh, foreign buyer. So you should have very good la linguistic competency. Fine, English language knowledge. That's great. We should have all the negotiation skills. Negotiation skills, yeah. I mean, you are offering, or, or you have submitted, or your company has submitted a quotation for $6. And they are offering us four point five dollars. So you need to negotiate to come to a point. Yeah, of course. Yes. So yeah, please else? creating the jobs. Creating the jobs, please. Which one? I didn't get you. Can you repeat it? Can you repeat it? Which one? Okay, basically what we have got, first thing we uh, need to have the core skills for merchandising. Second thing, you need to be a good communicator. Third thing, you need to have good English language proficiency. So, as, uh, now, now mute yourself. Please, do it. Now mute yourself. Sir, mic to mute korte bolen, sir. Yes, everyone, please mute yourself. Fine. Uh, be careful if you, you have some other noises. Please mute yourself, you don't need to talk. And those who are in a silent place, you may only talk. Or find a place where there will, be, uh, there will not be any noise. Okay, fine. So our merchandisers should have for knowledge from merchandising. If any certification is there, it is good. And uh, very good communication skill, negotiation skill, English language proficiency, because he will be working with the foreign buyers. So these are very important things uh, that our merchandiser should have, right? Fine. So you need to write it down in your resume because you will not be there that these things you have. So how can a recruiter understand that you have these skills? Definitely seeing your resume. If your resume has certain things like uh, in training that you have 
I've got training from merchandising. Okay, from education background, you are textile engineer and your major was really regarding your merchandising things and you do have some additional training or certifications for merchandising and you did some uh, workshop or training from communication or negotiation or English language proficiency like you have IELTS school. So that shows you are the right person to work for that particular post. So if that HR person selects you for interview board, that will add credit to that HR person as well. Okay, so things are like this. Second thing, your unique selling points. What are the unique selling points? USP, we call it USP, unique selling propositions or unique selling points. So if I ask you to talk about your unique selling pro propositions, like to sell out, what are, the, that, what are your USPs? Ask yourself and find out. This is my USP. For, for example, for me, okay, I, uh, I have very good communication skills. I can draft well. I mean, my English writing is very good. So I can draft well. I can write meeting minutes, uh, office notes, memos, and I'm a good trainer or public speaker. That may work where I, I mean, where I'm working at this moment. So director of CPDS should have articulated, should have very good efficiency in English language as well as in training industry. So these are my USP. What are your USPs? So do you have that idea? Uh, anyone, can you unmute yourself and share what is your USP so that we have uh, the preliminary idea about USP or unique selling propositions or points? Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Please proceed. Uh, please share, everyone. Anyone? Yeah, 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 Mr. Zamal, it's okay. Please proceed. Fine. I, I requested uh, our students to share what is your USP. Please unmute yourself and share. USP, unique selling propositions. I mean, what are the good things you have? At least you should know yourself. These are the things, okay, I have so that people can uh, buy me, people can offer me a job. You should know your own USP. If you do not have, so you need to work on that. Just a moment, please, Mr. Zamal. Yeah. Uh, my dear students, Please make the session participatory, okay? You have to participate. When Mr. Zamal asks you something, please reply, unmute your mic and reply, okay? So the session will be more participatory and more effective. Okay, thank you, please proceed. Yes, sir. Anyone? I have leadership skill. Good. To manage a group. That's great. That means you can uh, work for textile industry. You can lead a group of people, you can work in a team. So you know certain things of leadership. That's great. Your USP, you can lead people, you can work in a team. So you can t a lead team, you can work in a team. Team building, team leadership. Very good. Anything else? Uh, for others, you might not have this kind of things at this moment, but uh, uh, yeah, take the nuggets from here, from listening from others, that you should have your own USP. If you do not have idea about yourself, you know, what are the things, what are the three things that at this moment I do have so that I can sell myself, I can uh, request someone. For example, it, many students uh, come to our office for getting a job. When I ask, when I see the resume, Truly speaking, I do not feel like sending the resume to any organization because I will lose my credibility if I send that resume to that particular organization. I do have very good relation with HR community, but if one person is coming to me with a wonderful resume and he has really uh, outstanding skills, of course, I'm really proud enough to send his resume in different organization because that will showcase Southeast University to these organizations. Same thing. Yeah, share, sure, please. Oniruddho. 
I can I can utilize the time properly. What I would be given to do a job. That's okay. uh, my US strategy. Time management is skill. Fine. Yes. And I can. Um, that's a hobby of myself. That to know about other languages and to learn languages. Already, I'm just learning one language, and and I wish to learn any uh, more two languages. And I'm trying my best to do that. Which one? Chinese. Uh, yeah, I'm just learning Chinese, and after that, I want to learn Spanish. That's great. Fine. Okay. Anyone else? Other than Oniruddha? No one. Okay, let's proceed. Your resume uh, should be an easy to read format. I mean, uh, how many pages should uh, write as your resume? 10, 12, 5? No, definitely not. Not more than two pages. For freshers, I would say one page. But in Bangladesh, one page is not well accepted, so write at least two pages. So two pages are enough for your resume. And that should be easy to read format so that people can go through. Uh, today, I'll talk about the format, no worry about that. So ultimately, final goal is to get you to interview stage. Your resume, to write your resume, ultimately, final goal of your resume is to take you to interview so that is all about resume so if you have pretty good idea about your resume so that will help you create your best one that is eye-catching one got it any questions okay now the question is we heard a lot of things about cv uh, resume already our chairman sir uh, talked about a uh, uh, very interesting thing that is we call biodata for getting married uh, what are the differences you have? For example, okay, you do not have any experience regarding uh, creating your biodata, I mean, for getting married. Uh, in biodata, what do we do? We write a lot of things regarding our relatives, like uh, my father, my grandfather, my uncle, my brother, sisters, even my aunt, those who are well-established, those who has, uh, have the, I mean, recognition in the society. And sometimes if I do have a brother-in-law, but he doesn't have that much recognition, we just escape it. That means picking the best thing to sell. Selling is important. You need to know how to sell yourself. You need to know how to sell your product. As well as for getting married, you will be rejected or accepted based on what you write on your resume. I mean, that biodata. Okay, for getting married, that we call biodata. That is different. And today we are not talking about that. Today we'll be talking about your resume or CV. Which one? Any idea? Any idea? Unmute yourself and share. Which one should, uh, do we need? CV or resume? Resume. Resume. Okay. Resume. Resume. So, what are the differences between CV and resume? <laughs> Fine. Uh, I know. Uh, I mean, you're not interactive enough. So let's uh, go through with the details of CV and resumes. So based on the classifications, there are three types of, uh, I mean, uh, classifications between CV and resume. The first one, length. For CV, two pages to as many as possible, like for Guhosar. So he has a lot of accomplishments. While pursuing his PhD, he read everything enter his history and life from ages ssc to all other things even if he had uh, other achievements like stipend or scholarship before ssc he wrote there i mean for your cv that could be two to ten pages 20 pages 30 pages doesn't matter but for resume one to two pages got it for the purpose uh, for CB, targeted at fellow academics, I mean, if you want to pursue your higher education, master's, MPhil, PhD, or teaching job, or research-related job, you can write your CV, and all things will come there. And for resume, targeted, very specific job sector, even the word tailor. Uh, I mean, uh, if you want to just... Uh, make your shirt or pants you need to go to tailor right so like this the word tailoring for resume is important so what does it do i mean tailoring do tailor before you submit 
your single resume anywhere. I mean, what we do, we are so lazy, lazy enough that we create somehow, we copy paste from uh, some people our resume. And what we do, we copy that resume and paste in our page, just change the things and use uh, that resume to each and every application. Believe me, that doesn't work. It will work if you can customize your resume before sending anywhere as per the requirements of that things. So JD should be changed based on the job requirements. Your career objective should be changed based on that, uh, the particular post you are going to apply. So that is targeted and a specific job sector. For the content, includes entire work and education history, whether relevant or not, that doesn't matter, but you have done something. You did a training program. You have certification for CV, you need to incorporate all the things, right? Go, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, see, you need to incorporate everything while pursuing your PhD. That will add value, but for resume, no. Very specific, relevant to that particular job. Might, you, you might have uh, done 10 certification scores, but that 10 certification courses will not come to your resume if you apply for merchandising. So what you can do, you can uh, just add training re related to merchandising. If you apply for, uh, I mean, wash technology, like you have done your textile engineering, I don't know about your major, but uh, you want to apply for washing that uh, particular uh, manager or something technologist like this post. So you add certain training or certifications relevant to that washing thing. Okay, if you want to apply for fabric, I mean, your other certification may not work, but if you have any kind of training or expertise regarding your fabric, identifying and work on that, that will add value. Very specific thing, got it? So everyone, keep in mind your resume is a very targeted one for a specific job. It's in, includes only most relevant work, I mean work and education. So you can keep your resume within two pages. But the reality is a bit different because when I work with our students, when they come to our office and meet me, the thing is they do not have much thing to write on resume because they actually don't do anything. Apart from people, those who have uh, experience of working in different clubs. It is the reality. Go, sir, want to add something? No, it's okay. You can, you can proceed, please. Yeah. So, the reality is we do not have much thing to do. So what you can do to make your resume just eye-catching, to really have certain things in your resume, to write, you can be involved with these club activities. Do involve. You can uh, participate certain, uh, I mean, today Textile Club is organizing a uh, workshop on uh, CV writing. I requested them to send you, I mean, a digital certificate so that you can print it out and at least you can add in your resume. So on a regular basis from CPDS, from different clubs, they are organizing different events and they're giving certificates. I request you to join there and have this certification so that at least you can write on your resume. How you utilized your four year life in your university. Based on that, you'll be hired, truly speaking. Additionally, if you have certain uh, I mean, really you want to work in uh, this industry, like uh, textile industry, I would request you go for some training. That doesn't take much, uh, I mean, uh, fees or other things. But if you do have that professional certification, that help you to be exceptional, to stand out yourself from the crowd because a lot of students are completing graduation from Southeast University, other universities, from textile industry, and competitions are there. So if you want to stand out from that crowd, you need to have something really special. You need to find, and you do have resources. You talk to your teachers, you talk to uh, your coordinators, club moderators, ask them, what are the things I can do? I haven't found, I mean, found anyone in my, uh, very rare I found people that they came to my office and asked, sir, I am free uh, the next two months, so what can I do to prepare myself for the job market? Actually, we don't do that. Okay? 
So now the question is CV or resume? Definitely CV, right? How to write an eye-catching resume? Let's start. There are two parts of your resume. Number one, identification part. Number two, body part. So identification part in the just top of your resume and the body part later on, okay? Identification part at the top. First thing, your name. What should be the font? Uh, should be in center on left corner. We need to be very specific. Your identification part would be in, on the, at the top, okay? Your name will, will be bold, font size not more than 16, not less than 16. Mark it, that 16 will be my font size. What would be the font? Okay, it could be Calibri, it could be Times New Roman, it could be Arial. Calibri looks good. Times New Roman, okay, you may use. And directly write your name. Don't write CV of Aniruddha Kumar, no. Directly Aniruddha Kumar, okay? Bold, 16 font, use a, do not use fancy type of discursive, no. It was very easy to read, soothing to look, this kind of font, okay? Full address and postcode. Full address means if I send you a letter, that will reach you. Full address with postcode, that is important. And do not uh, use any address that you do not stay. Where you sleep and in the morning, when letters reach there, you can have it. So use that address. Actually, we call it where you sleep. Use that address. Phone with country code, because you are uh, studying in uh, textile industries and in Bangladesh, most of the, I mean, there are uh, companies are multinational. If you apply there, I mean, okay, they are collecting CV from here. Most probably they are HR or operations in Singapore or, or, uh, or Hong Kong or Shanghai. So if they want to, or Philippines, if they want to, talk to you from there, it is challenging. So use your phone code, country code. And these days also mention WhatsApp so that they can easily reach you, okay? Email ID, that should be professional sounding. That means with your name, not other things. LinkedIn ID, if I ask you, how many of you have heard the name LinkedIn? I have a LinkedIn ID. You have, that's I great. Have also. Fine. Mr. Jamal, I, wa I want to add a point regarding yes, email ID. Okay. Uh, I am experienced with my students. Some of my students use very, very, uh, that is, uh, odd looking IDs like Bagmara Jamal, okay, or Pagla Rafiq, something like that, uh, <laughs> to <laughs> make it look creative. But it's, it's not good practice. Just use your name, your name, your real name in your email ID. Uh, that, that is the reflection of your quality, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for adding those things. Okay, how many of you have LinkedIn ID? I All have of said. you. I All have of said. you. Okay. I have said. Fine. I, uh, I want I to have. check out. Uh, can you find my LinkedIn ID and connect me with you? Fine. Just today after this workshop, find your LinkedIn ID and connect. And uh, have you connected? I mean, have you got connected with your seniors, like those who are working already in the industry? Have you connected with them? Please do connect. Do connect few them. some, few on. Do connect them. So find out who are the students of Southeast University Textile Department, now where they're working, and if you have really aspiration to uh, get job in that companies, try to get connected with them on LinkedIn. And this is a professional uh, media so that you can really know of that industry, of that company, even you can know the job information from there. Okay? And please do not write in the inbox, I need a job, give me a job. No, do not write that. Rather, sell your skill. You can appreciate the Bhaiya, uh, I saw your uh, profile that you are from Southeast University. I am also and I am majoring in textile or, uh, I mean, dyeing or painting. I do have expertise on that. I did have such, some, I, I did some certification courses there. So if there is any opportunity, please let me know. 
I am the right person to do that job. This kind of things. Sell your competencies, skills, expertise, not cheap yourself. Okay? That's important. And finally, recent picture. Uh, I mean, uh, we uh, took pictures when we were a student of class, I mean, uh, uh, intermediate because we had to do our registration. Still, how many of you are using that picture? Please change it. I mean, after each six months, change your picture. It is important. So professional look picture is important with type, laser, everything. So go to a professional photographer and take a picture. Use that picture. So in your identification part, you can take the snaps or you can just have a screenshot. See, it is here. Your name, full address and with postcode, phone with country code, email ID, professional sounding email ID, okay? LinkedIn ID, recent picture. So this is your identification part. It will look like this. Got it? It will look like this. Yes, sir. So easy to read, nothing much. Okay? And uh, if you have this kind of email address like crazyboy at gmail.com, hotgirl at hotmail.com, dirtygirl at yahoo.com, please, Abus Balok 20, these days are over. Please now write a professional sounding email address. If Dalim, oh, don't do that, okay? Change your mindset now have a professional email ID that will be used next uh, rest of your life. Got it. And a study says that 76% of CVs are ignored if your email address is unprofessional. 70%. Be careful about your email address. And already Gosa mentioned that uh, he saw some email addresses that are not accepted in professional career. Got it? Uh, so hey. can yeah, please. Yeah, pl please continue. Fine. Body of a resume. That is important as well. So first identification after that body of a resume. So there are certain things you need to include in your body. Number one, career objective. The first thing after you identify. Okay, Zamal, please unmute your, mic your phone, your microphone. Zamal, Mr. Zamal, unmute. I'm sorry, I got disconnected, right? Did you hear the question? No, 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 I didn't, I didn't. Okay, please repeat. The student who asked the question, please repeat. Uh, sir, can we uh, use the short form of our university name or department name uh, in our email ID, professional email ID? Uh, is it important? I mean, uh, if it is not, so you shouldn't. You may, okay, uh, find Masood uh, underscore SEO. Yeah, you may, but it should be unique. Like after that, you may go for uh, Manchester. I think it is not necessary because you write your educational experience with the affiliated institution, right? Yeah. So it is better to write your real name uh, as email ID. That reflects your quality, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sometimes it happens like uh, for me, uh, my first email uh, ID was uh, with DU, I mean, Dhaka University, jamaldu at gmail.com. So I had to carry it out because I submitted that email ID in different places. But these days, I'm, uh, I mean, uh, I feel that uh, that should not be my email ID, rather very unique with my name only because I'm working in different private universities, different universities, and I started some other universities as well. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't, I couldn't use their name. Same thing goes for you, uh, okay? It should be unique regarding your name, it's okay. If you study in Oxford, fine, you can add. If you study in uh, Manchester, okay, you can add. That will add value. I'm not saying that if you add Southeast, that will not add value, you may. Freedom is yours, okay? So inside your body, after identification part, first thing, career objective. We are going to talk about that. How can you write your career objective? And second one, 
working experience. If you have three plus years working experience, you may add. So after career objective, you need to add your working experience. Okay, and for the freshers like uh, you people, you do not have working experience. So after career objective, you directly go to your academic qualification. So you uh, skip that part. I mean, working experience part, academic qualification. So don't take much. I mean, many places. What you can do, you can take uh, just. Uh, I'm I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a, a Word file so that you can use that one. But don't copy paste. Just you can use that as a model and use your own one. Okay, academic qualification and find co-curricular activities like your four years life are important for your career future. It proves that you were serious about your career. So you were involved with uh, extracurricular or co-curricular activities, club activities. So you need to mention there. See, you are not doing your club activities only for the sake of uh, club or you do have interest, but you can sell it out while you will be pursuing, I mean, trying to get a job. You will be writing a resume. Because in interview board, what interview viewers does? I mean, usually he, I mean, they, ask questions from your resume. If you do have a co-curricular activity as the president of textile club, a lot of questions will come from uh, your presidentship. What did you do? What sort of organ, organ? Because in job descriptions of president, you will write a lot of things usually. That, okay, as a president, I organize this event, this event, this event. So a lot of questions will come from there. Co-curricular activities is important. And next one, training. I mean, you are really serious, you're for your life. It proves that you participate in different training. You do have certifications to participate in workshop, training, certification program, as many as possible. Finally, if any additional components you have like linguistic proficiency, some people are pursuing their other language like Chinese or uh, Turkish or Spanish. So you can add these things as well. Okay, finally, reference. So these are the things you need to add in your body. I'm going to detail one by one. So how can you write career objective? Uh, can you see these three objective? Yes, sir. Uh, can, can anybody but, read it out? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, uh, for interruption. Uh, uh, we fine. haven't enough net, sir. We oh, haven't enough not net. have enough net. Fine. The yes, first sir. one, to obtain a position that will allow me to advance my potential while seeking new challenges. Number two, to seek for a position through my strong analytical, organizational, and leadership skill. Sound good. Uh, to secure a significant position, utilizing my strong leadership in a reputed organization. I mean, it looks good, all the objectives, but the thing is, if you see the red line, I mean, the obtain position, to seek for a position, to secure a significant position. These are the things I mean, when you write, trying, looking for a better position, asking, begging, seeking, these kind of words or phrases seem like negative ones. Instead of writing these, you can write, just show your interest to work. You must have that intention to work with the company. Write one sentence, emphasizing how you will use your skills and knowledge, not what you want to gain. Keep in mind that you want, you are begging for something, you are seeking, you are looking for, you are trying, you are asking a position. That doesn't work. Instead of that, try to convince, sell your skills, competencies, and look for an option to work there. Okay? So, the good Career objective should be like this, to work hard with full determination and dedication to achieve. This is general. Anyone can use this kind of uh, career objectives. So to work with full determination and dedication to achieve organizational as well as personal goals. To work in a creative sector, if you want to work with uh, like uh, uh, designing things or I mean, this kind of creative sector of different local or multinational advertising agencies. So you want, you can write this one. Uh, I mean, if I know that uh, you do have this particular background, I may help you write your own one. 
Like if you want to work for pharmaceutical industry, right, it's specific to work in the sales and marketing sector of a local or multinational pharmaceutical industries of Bangladesh. To work in financial industries of Bangladesh. So one sentence, very specific. Like if you want to work for accounting or finance, to work as an executive in a financial institution, what my knowledge, leadership skills, and experience from extracurricular activities can be utilized to achieve organizational as well as personal goals. So you are talking about that organization you want to contribute. You are talking about that your skills you have learned, certain things from your co-curricular and extracurricular activities and from your previous experience. You want to incorporate, I mean, you want to use this for the help of that organization or position. See, that should be there. If you want to apply for HR, so to work in as a HR ex executive in any local, I mean, this kind of specific uh, career objective should be there. If you want to work for marketing or supply chain or merchandising, you need to write your specific career objective. Like to work as a supply chain analyst or merchandiser in any local or multinational organization where, I mean, already you have told me that for big, being a merchandiser, you need to have communication skill, negotiation skill. So see, that should come in your career objective. So to work as a merchandiser, in any local or multinational organization where my negotiation, communication, and relationship building skills and experience from extracurricular activities can be utilized to achieve organizational as well as personal goals. See, I mean, ultimately you are selling your skills, competencies. That should be there in your career objective. Do you have any questions regarding your career objective? Anyone? No question? No, sir. No. no sir. Why not? You must ask some questions. Always uh, ask yourself why, 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 how. You must have some question. If you don't have any question, that is, you cannot learn more. You, must, um, you might have a background from fabrics. You might have background from manufacturing. So what could be the... Uh, career objective of fabrics or manufacturing or wash or dyeing and printing. That should, I mean, th that this type of question should come because I did not write here. Yeah. So if I ask Mr. Mohammad Riyazuddin Rakib, can you tell me what will be the exact objective? Is it objective, Mr. Zaman? Yeah, career objective, of course. Career objective. If you want to apply to a dyeing industry, what will be the objective in one sentence? Tell me, please. Mr. Mohammad Riyazuddin Rakib, can you hear me? Don't feel shy. We are a family here. Yes, sir. I'm hearing. Okay. If you want to apply uh, as a production officer uh, to a dyeing industry, what you write in objective? Just you prepare a sentence and share with us right now. Actually, sir, I don't have any ideas. I am, it's my second semester. Okay. So. Fine, okay, fine. okay, no problem. Okay, please, Mr. Zamal, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first thing, uh, you need to uh, understand about your future. You should have clear understanding about your goal, job market. What are the positions you might have in future after your three years or two years or one year? So you need to have that idea. What are the positions you have? I mean, for the company, that could be safety management, that could be sustainable chemical or environment related positions, that could be compliance management, that could be production related, dyeing, knitting. I don't have much idea because I'm from purely arts background. But as a student of textile in uh, I mean, uh, textile engineering, you should have very specific, clear idea about the job market of Bangladesh, about your industry specific job related idea. If you do not have, go to your teachers. They do have, because they were a student of textile engineering. They are working with their alumni. You should talk to your alumni. Why did you work? And if uh, you want to have a job like them, what are the additional skills you need? So if you talk, if you have that idea, if you communicate with your seniors, if you participate in this kind of workshop, that will open your new new windows to start think. Okay? 
So if you do not have that idea, you can write your resume. But if you have idea about your job market, about your future, about the position you are going to apply, yes, that will help you write your resume. Perfect one. Even prepare yourself for the job market. If you do not have, what happens? Usually, when we are students, we are damn care. We don't have any care about the future. We don't have a, about the care about the job market. Days are coming, crucial. A lot of factories are going to be shut down. A lot of people will be unemployed. So you'll be in crisis. People will be in crisis if you do not have additional things. And ask yourselves, what are the additional things I have besides my university degrees? That will determine, that will select, that will help you where you can go. So it is important. Be serious. It doesn't matter why you are staying at this moment. You might be staying at your home, but try to add value in your life each day. You are joining classes on the, for the sake of classes? No. Yes, try to join there. Yes, please. Hello? Hello? Uh, you want to say something? Uh, no, 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 sir. Just, uh, I think it was corrupted. Uh, is that okay now at this moment? Because uh, internet yes. is a bit unstable here. Yes, mm. yes, sir. You can continue. Oh, fine. And for any general job, you can write this kind of uh, career objective, okay? According to your field, tailor your career objective. Even the position you are going to apply, based on that, you create your one. Okay. Next one, working experience. Include your work experience in uh, reverse chronological order. So reverse means the current position you are holding at this moment. So from that reverse chronological order, not like, okay, 2010, 2015, 2000, no, 2020, 2015, 2010, like this, reverse chronological order, so that they can see and have idea about your recent activities. Include the name of the company, the position, date, and employment with JD, job description, not general ones. Okay, as you are students, I'm not going to focus much on the, this working experience. I'll show just a bit, very specific with power words. There are certain words that we call power out of words of resume. So you need to walk, use those so that that can be used. Okay, like uh, this is my one. Uh, many days back, like 2013, 14, I worked at Southeast University. So I did something from there. If you see that will motivate any recruiter to call me to interview board if I apply for admissions or administrative positions. Like what I did, I planned, developed, implemented all the promotional activities for increasing students. Catchy words are there. Sentence is catchy. Prepared or necessary. Like at this moment, all the universities are struggling regarding their increasing students. So I planned, developed, implemented promotional activities, prepared all necessary documents, admission, brochure, and other things. So these are the things actually for job description. What are the achievements? See the achievements there. The students' enrollment increased 30% to 40% in different programs. Received a letter of appreciation from vice chancellor for fulfilling the target. Like target was for 12,000, 1,200. We uh, just... Uh, uh, got admitted this that semester, most probably 1,900 students. Reward and additional increment for innovative and satisfactory performance in 2013. In fact, to get my current position at Southeast University, these three lines helped me. They asked me questions, really, additional increment at Southeast University, that doesn't happen here. But you received, yes, I received. Because I performed in a way that university management was so happy, they gave me additional increment. That means I had something. So, you know, everyone is doing his best to perform. But the way I presented in my resume, that took me to the interview board. And I won my interview board by selling what I did. So everyone is, at this moment, I'm doing a lot of things. If I do, cannot write in an attractive way, I will not be able to sell these activities. Like at this moment, my best selling things that, okay, university was organizing any kind of big national or international level event, I am hosting. So this is my selling points. See, definitely I'm gonna write them in my resume for the future. And I'm gonna 
tell them the story, how I help university to continue their virtual activities. Of course, documents are there, videos are there, live programs are there. See, try to utilize each thing to incorporate in your resume and sell it out to get your better result. So this is the example actually I used to show you, nothing else, okay? What is JD? Ultimate job description is called JD. So job description should be there. And even I do rewrite my job description before applying anywhere based on the job requirement. So I mean relationship between job requirement and job description should be there. So if your job description covers everything that is required by that, by that particular company, that means that is the match. Job requirements from the company. Job description, what I do, what I have. So if both of them match, that means they will hire you, okay? So how to write job description? List roughly three important tasks, three, not much, not one page, two pages, no. I might be doing a lot of things, but that should, should not be there. Very specific things, okay? List roughly three important tasks, accomplishments and skills gained to each job. So three, three, three. Use power words to describe your achievements. Power words. So what are the power words? Yes, I'm going to show you. Avoid passive phrases such as responsible for or duties include. These kind of things, passive ones. The I was responsible for international office. I was responsible for CPDS. I was responsible for club activities. No. Very specific word. What did you do for yes. club affairs? Yes. Okay. Instead of responsible, you have to write, I did it. I yeah. did it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, like for me, for clubs, after joining, all the clubs got synchronized. See, the word. I was responsible for club. Before my joining in 2017, South East University, clubs were not there. So after my joining, they got synchronized. We have started a club constitution, club rules, moderator appointment system, appointment letters are uh, given to moderators so that they can use that appointment letters for their career. See, these kind of things. And each year we are building new executive committees. So these are my achievements as a director of CPDS because I introduce these things, not I, but when I'll be selling this, I. Though Meshkat sir, our previous vice chancellor, uh, he gave, gave input more than 60%. Ideas came from him. Ideas came from moderators. Ideas came from club leaders. But when I'm using this in my resume and interview board, I'm selling it. These are my work because I was responsible. See, that is why I'm letting everyone uh, does anything, whatever they want. But at the end of the day, as of course, you should be that... Uh, uh, wide, you should have that wide heart so that you can incorporate everyone. Okay, fine, let's go. Avoid passive phrases such as responsible for and duties include details with examples and achievements should be there. So if you can give that example, like I have used 2013, I have used 2014, I have used 30 to 40 percent, I have used very specific uh, that letter of appreciation from vice chancellor because when they appreciated me, I told them, can you give me a written appreciation letter that will uh, help other members of my admission department a lot. So they issued an appreciation letter. I took it in my pocket. I photocopied, distributed everyone, used them. They couldn't because they do not know how to write resume. They do not know how to sell it out. But I took it in my pocket and I sold it out with double salary. See, these are the things actually. You need to be really uh, smart enough to use good things. Details with examples and achievements. This should be there. And power or of resume, these are the words. For organizational skills, if you say first uh, line, the category, field, I mean filed, incorporated, organized, prepared, recorded, registered, volunteered. For management power words, these are the things. Administered, implemented, managed, negotiated, produced, Recognize, strengthen, supervised for creative power words, adapted, combined, created, customized, designed, developed, solved, trained, mentored for achievement related, 
achieved, built, developed, established, expanded, innovated. These are called power words to write your resume. If you can use these action words in your resume, yes, your resume will be attractive enough. Okay, any question? How to write JD. And second one, how to present an academic qualification. I mean, your academic qualifications include the degrees you have received in reverse chronological order, like first honors, I mean, your engineering uh, uh, BSc, then go your intermediate HSC, then go your SSC, reverse order. Be sure to include your name of each institution, its location, and your date of graduation or expected date of graduation. When applicable, include your major minor fields, it is important, as well as your GPA, honors and publications if you have projects you need if you have a good project that you spent your four months to complete that project you work for a company like uh, in your uh, uh, field work or we call it internship so you should include in your resume that what did you do there what are the job description you perform because basically for your industry related work for textile engineering your industry work helps a lot to get acquainted with that particular machines and uh, I mean operations and other things. So these help a lot, try to include, okay? So your educational qualification should cover like this. Very simple, specific, not much. Okay, like BBA, South East University, Specialization Marketing, not board, the passing year. CGPA, HSC, this, 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 like this. So any question about your educational qualification? No, just four lines. Extra and co-curricular activities. Very important one for you. This part is really important for fresher as you are going to apply for fresher as a fresher. Involvement with club activities, participation in volunteer work, engaging with part-time job, organizing events in campus life, being involved with any other activities besides your studies, these are really important. If you are involved with cultural club, do right. What are the things you have? Like uh, Bidhan is here. He is the president of cultural club. He was secretary of uh, cultural club. So a lot of events he has organized. Synchronologically, he should write. And what, are, I mean, these are the things actually show you were active in your student life. Participation in voluntary work. Sometimes you do participate in different voluntary activities organized by the department, university, clubs. So you should keep the track. And those who are studying at this moment, second semester or third semester, first semester, I would request everyone, prepare your own resume. And after each three months or four months, try to update, try to write. And you will see after four years, a lot of changes are there. And after each six months, if you see that uh, you do not have anything to add there, I would request you to slap yourself because you couldn't do anything to add on your resume. So if you can really be active and write as your resume as like a diary of your four year journey, after four years, you will see you would do have very wonderful, decorated and very rich resume. That will definitely help you to get a good job. Okay, engaging with part-time job. Yes, we encourage you to be engaged with part-time work. That will give you different taste of real corporate life. Because I know, damn care life in a student life. But if you really work for a company, that will teach you the struggling period of corporate life. So that will shape your future career. And also, uh, we prefer like for me, I was involved in different activities. For my first job requirement was two years experience, relevant experience, two years. For my first university job, I did not have a single day because my result hasn't published yet for honors. I didn't have masters there. But I applied, I made my resume in a way that that two years, I mean, experience covered, I used to take classes in different coaching centers. I used to go outside of Dhaka to conduct the classes. So I just presented in a way this taking classes of coaching centers. They thought 
these are my experience and in the interview board they didn't ask me that you do not have direct experience rather than they asked me okay you do have wonderful experience of visiting different districts so you know a lot of colleges and students and coaching centers you can help us a lot see i materialized each thing in my career if you are smart enough to do so of course within very short time you can reach in your i mean desired positions organizing events in campus life that will help you that will help you to showcase certain skills like you to have team working skills organizing skills uh problem solving skills these are the skills when you do organize events a lot of problems are here so you do have a lot of uh, stories to share in your interview board see mention this being involved with any other activities besides studies those who are students of, of fourth year now we are going to finish you may think okay i didn't do anything my fourth end of fourth year how should i write yes when you finish your studies and come to us this kind of questions will come to you sabir hosain raised hand yes sir suppose i am doing a business uh, so should i include in uh, co curricular activities or experience yeah are you going to leave your business and start uh, for looking for job um, yes sir uh fine thank you could you please mute yourself a bit mute yourself okay what happened like for me i did have a coaching center in farm gate i miserably failed i materialized this one as well like i tried my level best but i failed from the failure i learned certain things how not to fail anymore so it depends on you definitely you can you did have business but you failed you learned certain things lessons from there from your failure and you can utilize that how not to fail in future as this morning you can continue your business because you don't have money it's okay you can write of course you do have business you can write if it is reasonable if it goes with your uh, desired job i mean if you uh, I, i don't know what is your business and what types of job you want depending on that you, you can write write them or not okay like if you are working for that you do have a business for selling garments industry i mean garment things products or this kind of thing definitely you can uh, relate it to your job as well okay thank you sir yeah this kind of thing you can write uh, as an extra curricular activities like this person was general secretary of south east university tourism and photography club so he used the power word because he did not have the uh job experience but same kind of experience power what he can use in club activity see plan develop implement the event plans and of the club prepared and place program proposal for budget for organizing different events and those who are involved here are club activities you know this kind of things you do on a regular basis but you do not know how to write them so now you are you can know how to write them coordinated with executives and general members and allocated work for them see and other activities he where he wrote it down even uh, south east university student ambassador he wrote it there why because uh, out of 8000 students 10000 students we picked only 200 campus ambassador or brand ambassador and you are one of them if you are definitely you do have certain extra things that is your university picked you this is selling points for you if anybody ask you i mean uh, we organized some on campus recruitment program i was on that recruitment board and when students came with their resume they wrote that i am brand ambassador and from vivo phone they asked uh, brand ambassador what does it mean why did you write that then that person explained in a nice way that out of 10000 students only 100 was picked for brand ambassador and i was one of them i do have something i know how to communicate with people i have to have good english and presentation skills and he was picked this person was picked for vivo now he is working for aci so i mean uh, he is doing his mba as well as he is working already he has worked for vivo that is multinational company he is working a large local company called aci see and his friends are still studying at south east university in mba and he is also doing his mba i mean the activeness of a person can take himself in a desired position okay why employers want to see some of your skills what are the thing skills these are the skills communication organizing 
team management skills, leadership skills, problem solving skills, hardworking skills, interpersonal skills. If you are involved with any club activities, all the skills are there. You can write, you can claim all the skills that you have if you are actively involved in any club activities, okay? We are running out of time. Training, it is important, okay? You can write like this, name of the training, duration, trainer or institute, training date. Like this, have a table. Communication is three hours, CPT, South University, 11th October 2018. Like this, write it down. So for today, the C essential skills for debate, one day, SU debating club. Today, civil writing, uh, training, Southeast Textile Club. Do write like this and have certifications. For initial stages, this training, this activities will help you. And once you have three years plus experience, you don't need this. But you need to write your resume in a way that you don't need this. Okay? Fine. Uh, what are the training you may have? Excel, PowerPoint, Advanced, MS Word. So for everyone, whatever job you do, you need Excel training. You need PowerPoint. You need Advanced MS Word. I mean, there are certain things you need to be really expert on that. Okay? English, the first and prime qualification of corporate job. Public speaking skills, communication, etiquette. These are the things you need to know. You need to know etiquette. You need to know communication. You need to know public speaking. Digital marketing, sales. And these days, digital platform is going to... I mean, if you do work for merchandising or sales or supply chain, you need to have the idea about digital marketing. You need to have that idea, okay? You need to be acquainted with digital platform, how to organize an event on Zoom or Google, I mean, Microsoft Team or uh, uh, Google Meet. You need to be acquainted with all the cultures because these days physical interaction is not there. You need to do organize all the meetings with buyers, with foreigners using these platforms. And if you are not acquainted, if you do not know how to mute on mute, if you do not know how to stop and start video, if you do not know how to host and uh, making people host, if you do not know how to share, you will not be able to survive. You need to know, you need to know. Like five months back, I wasn't acquainted with this culture. But within five months, I knew that if I want to survive, I need this. I learned it from YouTube. I watched two hours video, I learned and I'm leading. Ask Guho sir, he's here. If any meetings uh, are organizing, uh, organized at South Asian University, I'm hosting this. I'm communicating with BDRAN. I'm still, I have submitted a proposal to buy a Zoom account. See, that means I learned, I adapted. Am I audible? Because the ne network is interrupted here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's okay. So if you want to survive in this new normal life, you need to have that skills. Okay, so try to learn. Resources are there on Google, on YouTube. Try to learn and incorporate. If you cannot, go somewhere. Go some, someone who knows this and ask him. If you need, you need, uh, if you, uh, need to pay him, pay. Do something.